Welcome to Clubhouse Beyond the Workout, episode six, speaking to the beautiful one and only Emily Johnson. We are so excited today, you guys. Thank you for jumping on. We know it's been a couple weeks since our last Clubhouse. Um, We are back, though, and we are excited to continue our series, Beyond the Workout. Um, So just as a little refresher, this series discusses the many elements that make up our health and wellness, otherwise known as holistic fitness, which includes, but not limited to, our physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual wellness. So we would love to introduce to you Emily Johnson. I'm just going to give you guys a little uh, background about Emily. She is a certified holistic nutritionist, a trained holistic chef, and the host of her very own podcast called Newly Nutrition, available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So I'm going to pause for a second so you guys can all go download it right now. Go subscribe called Newly Nutrition. I'm going to give you guys like 10 seconds. I'm going to have like awkward silence real quick. We're going to do it. Newly Nutrition. Go do it. You won't regret it. Let's go. (laughs) I love it. I love it. All right. Now that everyone's going to subscribe to Newly Nutrition, because you guys have to hear all the goodness about Emily. Not that you guys, you guys are going to hear so much about it now, but she interviews the most amazing people as well. So anyway, Emily's mission is to help women who are consumed by their careers to start prioritizing their health and saying yes to themselves. She focuses on cleaning up the diet, setting work and social boundaries, focusing on self-love, daily health habits, mindfulness, and stress management. Oh my goodness, what does Emily not do? Um, So without further ado, please welcome Emily. Emily, take the floor. Please give us a little background about yourself, where you're from, your background in nutrition, and what you've been up to lately. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for that epic introduction, (laughs) Danielle and Louise. Like, would not expect anything less from you two, actually. So super thrilled to be here, everyone. So thank you for tuning in today. Like Daniela said, I am a holistic nutritionist, but I wasn't always in this space. I used to work a corporate job for the world's largest alcohol supplier, and it was a fun job. I mean, honestly, I was tasked with going into bars and nightclubs in San Francisco when I was supposed to build relationships with bar owners and market big brands like Kettle One and Smirnoff and after three years of that, I realized that wasn't my passion, and that's when I took a career change to pursue my passion for holistic health, and I decided to get my degree in as a certified holistic nutritionist in Vancouver, Canada, which is where I am right now, um, and ever since then, I've been supporting women that were just like me or that are just like me That a few years ago when I was struggling to find a balance with my work and my health and because I knew deep down I really wanted to prioritize my well-being and my health but I was really struggling to get there so focusing on career-driven women is my passion and I absolutely love seeing them really break out of their shell and showing them how easy it can be to really prioritize your well-being every single day and say yes to yourself so that is a little bit about me I offer one-on-one consultations. I offer group coaching. And right now, I'm also about to launch my online course, Clean Up Your Diet, which is a basically designed so you can be your own nutritionist. It is a self-served online course, so you do it at your own pace. And it has everything from how to glow up your pantry and your fridge, how to read a, uh, labels, how to understand like what's a good brand, what's not a good brand, and giving you that kitchen confidence so you actually like to be in the kitchen and not just all of that amazing fundamentals with nutrition but I also dive deeper into really understanding your relationship with food how do you feel when you're eating do you feel guilty when you eat certain foods how are you raised to eat and these things are really important when it comes to nutrition so you also get that deeper dive of nutrition in my online course. So I highly recommend you check it out. You can find more information on my Instagram at Wu Girl Wellness. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of background.
background about me, and I'm super, super, super excited to be here today. I love it. That's so amazing. Um, we are definitely, I've, I'm so curious to learn even more about Clean Up Your Diet, so we um, hopefully will have a little bit of time at the end to dive in a little bit more into detail about that. But um, I know you just said, you just mentioned that you love to work with um, women in the professional women in the workplace you were you know you are a professional woman in the workplace um so that is your specialty and I love that I was looking on your website of course and I was just kind of perusing and this testimonial just really stuck out to me so I wanted to share it with everybody because I think it's really cool but also because I have so many questions that follow up to that. So this um, this testimonial is from a girl named Julie in Sacramento, California. She said, I love how Emily became my motivator, my therapist, my life coach, my nutritionist, and my friend all in one. We tackled every issue I had together. We accomplished so much in a short in such a short amount of time. Some of the major things we worked on were exploring a plant-based diet and generally eating better, improving my sleep, and exercise and more movement daily. Emily made it easy and she has given me the tools to be able to continue my progress. Most people at some time in their life need a coach who can help them get where they want to be and live a happy, fulfilling, and healthy life. So I want to just like kind of dive deep into this real quick because therapist, life coach, nutritionist, like you not only helped clean up her diet, but improved her sleep, improved her exercise and encouraged her to move more daily. There's so much involved in that. Like that to me, that is holistic fitness to me. That is how we define it. So can you dive into kind of like how, first of all, how you tackle all of those things for one person? Um, and then also just kind of the importance of it all as a whole. I know that's a loaded question, so take the floor. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, holistic health isn't just about, you know, the nutrition, the food that you're putting in your body, but you're right. It's everything. It's the sleep. It's how you're internally speaking to yourself. It's what you do first thing in the morning. It's what you're doing in your free time. It's what you're consuming on social media. I mean, it really comes down to every aspect of our lives. And so that's why it's so important when I work with clients to really dive deeper than the nutrition. And I focus on things like sleep and daily movement because those little things, they might seem little, but they actually add up to the whole picture of, of your being. So when I work with a client, I first do an assessment and see where they're most struggling. Uh, and chances are they're usually struggling the most with nutrition. So usually we start there, but I also ask questions like, uh, you know, how's your sleep? And some people might not even think that their sleep is bad, but then they say like, oh, well, I, I don't have, I can't fall asleep until 2 a.m. and then I wake up at 6 and I'm unrested. I don't feel well. And so then I'm like, okay, that's a sign that we should be working on your sleep. So I basically just give simple, tangible tips and strategies to make sure that they can make these changes possible. And I, I really don't want to overwhelm my client. And so uh, basically, we'll start with nutrition first, and then maybe I'll tackle on something like sleep or, you know, having a goal of getting 10,000 steps a day. And I really don't want to overwhelm them, so it's really important that they are aware of that this is a health journey. This is not a, you know, one-size-fits-all approach. This is not something that is going to happen overnight, and it really comes down to making these small attainable changes every single day. So I really work with them on a daily basis, checking in, making sure they're reaching their small goals that we kind of set for them every single day. And we start small because starting small is really the, the foundation of the bigger picture. And yeah, I mean, it, it's really important to not set yourself up for disappointment by setting these unrealistic big goals. Like for example, I'm going to cut bread or I'm going to cut sugar, you know, something like that. Like you don't want to set those goals because chances are you're going to end up binging or indulging and make setting yourself up for essentially failure and to develop unhealthy habits with the food that you're eating. So it really, like I said, comes down to setting those small attainable goals and 
just holding yourself accountable and really connecting to that why piece. Why do you want to be on this health journey? Why do you want to feel good? You know, really digging deep and finding that why is going to keep you motivated throughout this journey. I love that because I feel like that idea of, you know, gradual progress is something that we've also talked a lot about in this in this series or in these chats. And it's just amazing to see it come full circle where every element that we discuss, it's very, very relevant, you know, with anything that you approach. It's all about being patient with yourself, because a lot of times we just we want that end goal. You know, we want to get there right away. And we and it's not it's not out of a bad thing. It's great. Like we're, we're determined, but sometimes setting up those those huge, huge, I guess, unrealistic, quote unquote, goals for such a short period of time can only lead to, you know, kind of making yourself feel like you, uh, you are a little defeated. So setting those small goals, absolutely amazing. Um, with that being said, you know, I know you mentioned like cutting X, Y, Z and all this stuff. And I know that there's a lot of, there's a stigma behind certain foods, right? There's like carbs, there's bread, there's sugar, there's all this stuff. So to kind of lay it out on the table in your eyes, from your perspective, what does eating healthy really mean or how do you see it whenever you approach it in these cases? I love this question so much. Okay, so it's actually really simple. It's super simple and I find that the best approach for pretty much anyone, no matter if you're plant-based or gluten-free or anyone with dietary restrictions, the best approach for a healthy diet and a vibrant diet that's going to really fuel your body in the best way is eating just real whole foods. And what I mean by that is eating foods that haven't been processed, foods that haven't been tampered with in a factory, foods that you're at the grocery store and you pick something up and ask yourself, was this harvested or was this gone through a factory process? You know, really being aware of how, where your food comes from. I mean, it's really that simple. So eating as much vegetables as you can, fruit is good, high quality protein, making sure that if you are eating meat, it's sustainably sourced. That is super, super important. Making sure you're getting your healthy fats. So avocados, coconut oil, olive oil, salmon, those kinds of things. And limiting the processed food, that being said, I understand that life is meant to live and it's fun to have cake and ice cream and, and wine like I do all the time and really just finding that healthy balance that works for you and really no one can tell you what that is except yourself just by trial and error, um, educating yourself first on what's healthy and what isn't and then aiming to, to eat that way, I would say 80% of the time is optimal and not stressing if you can't be perfect. Um, so yeah, eating healthy is actually quite simple and I'm so passionate about this topic and I love teaching people about how simple it is to cook a delicious, healthy AF meal made of all real ingredients that are going to fuel your body for the best and not make you feel bad. I think there is a stigma with healthy eating that it's like, meal prepping of brown rice, chicken, and broccoli. That's kind of what I thought for years. And that is not the case at all. You can make such good food with whole real ingredients, a couple of pantry staples. And I, like, I shock myself daily about the things that I create. And like, I'm not, I, I claim to be a holistic chef, which I am. My boyfriend would like roll his eyes at me, but I like can't believe how good food can taste from just real foods. It's better than the processed shit that you would find, excuse my language, that you might be used to eating growing up, right? So really, it, it, just eating real whole foods, and there's so many amazing health blogs on the internet where you can find like real clean ingredient recipes that taste amazing. So again, quite simple, real whole foods, hasn't been processed or tampered with in a factory, and because it's going to provide you the most nutrient uh, value. So simple. I love it. Um, however, well, not however, but speaking of stigmas, um, another stigma, I guess, if you will, is 
portion size, portion control. As a nutritionist, if you if someone came up to you and asked you, hey, like, I don't even, well, one, I don't even know where to begin, so then you're like, okay, Whole Foods. Um, okay, but now how much? Like, what would you tell them? And, and, and like you said before, like, not one size fits all. It's like everybody has, obviously, everybody has a different appetite. Everybody has different styles of, of living, which has to do with how much you eat, so on and so forth. Like, for example, I eat a lot <laughs> because I, you know, because I work out a lot. But for someone who might be sedentary, it's different, like, so on and so forth. But then there's, like, this whole, like, oh, my gosh, portion control, like, only have, like, the size of your hand for the meat and all and it's just like almost to the point where it becomes so stressful at least for me when someone's like "Mm, I have to like measure my plate it like that causes stress and I feel like causing stress is kind of the opposite of what we're looking for when we're looking for a healthy uh relationship with our food so can you just kind of go into how you would approach that with a client Yeah, absolutely. So what I agree, I think when you're at a point where you're like counting calories or measuring your food so much that it's, it's stressful, then that's really taking away from the nutrient value of the food. Um, I'm a huge advocate of intuitive eating. So eating until you feel satiated or full, right? Like we don't want to, I don't want to give my clients specific measurements of like only eat half a cup of quinoa and a palm size of chicken breast yeah that's a good guideline however yeah so maybe start with that and then eat and if you get full before your plate is finished then you know that okay I don't need to eat that much quinoa or whatever so it really comes down to tuning into your body and listening to your body and seeing how much food that you can eat without obviously overstuffing yourself I think we all have that ability to feel like, okay, I think I've had enough today. And and sometimes we overeat and that's okay. Um, and just honoring yourself, like, you know, and also finding the balance, right? It's, yeah, we can say eat, you know, this amount of chicken, this amount of vegetables, but just making sure, ask yourself, am I getting enough balanced foods on my plate? So when I say balanced food, I mean having your protein 100%, having uh, some vegetables, having some leafy grains, and having some healthy fats, as long as you're getting those main key components in your, uh, like, every meal that you're eating, just tune in to how much you can eat, and then you can be the one to decide how much you need to eat. Um, It takes practice, too, and it's not something we were taught growing up is intuitive eating, right? It's something that, it's kind of a new thing. Well, it's not technically new, but it's kind of becoming more mainstream to listen to your body, to feel if you're full and to not overeat. It takes practice, and you might have grown up in a household where the parents are like, you're not getting up until you finish your plate. Yeah. And while that's great in terms of not wasting food, not everyone is going to eat the same proportions you're right so it's just about experimenting and making sure you are really eating those real whole foods uh in a balanced way just making sure you're getting your macronutrients and then like i said experiment for yourself who that that um hit home you know don't get up until you finish all your food <laughs> that is so real oh my gosh but you know i have had that conversation a lot in a different scenarios of like how that is such a big thing you know or especially like as as a growing boy people expect you to eat so much and all this stuff and sometimes it's like where do you how do you find that balance where do you draw that line all that kind of stuff so i love that i love that you said that because very very relatable now um, we kind of talked about, you know, starting with whole foods and all that kind of stuff. But I guess a little scenario for you. If someone is brand new to this whole world of like healthy foods and nutrition and they're like, hey, I don't know what to get when I go to the store. Like, where do I even begin? If you were with them and you walked into the store, like, how would you show them through? What would you what would you guide them, at, you know, towards or kind of, I guess, walk us through your virtual grocery shopping adventure (laughs) oh you just gave me such a good idea like maybe i'm gonna film myself in the grocery store and do a walkthrough yes do it that's so smart yeah thank you for that inspiration (laughs) so first i would say we're focusing on whole foods okay so i would hit the produce and i really would grab 
like three different types of leafy greens, like arugula, spinach, mixed greens, kale, whatever you like. You need to be eating those like every single day. I try to get those in every single meal. Um, and, and also just like having things like mixed green salad in your fridge is so easy to whip up a quick salad at home with whatever ingredients you have in your fridge. Right. So just really thinking in that way of like mixed greens equals options always. Um, so produce, like always having things like avocados, some fruit berries are low in sugar. So if you're watching your weight or watching your blood sugar, you don't really want to be eating too many things like bananas or mangoes. You really want to be focusing on low glycemic fruits like uh, dark berries, cherries, blackberries, that kind of thing. Um, and then also grabbing things that are going to, you know, be a bit more substantial. So things like sweet potatoes and bell peppers, tomatoes, onion, just like really aim to get variety and think about it like you want to eat the rainbow, you know? So as many variety of colorful vegetables that you can get in, grab them. Um, lemons are great. Things like ginger, garlic, onion to obviously like bring out some flavors. Um, and yeah, so that's really the produce section. Okay. That's the first step. And then I would say let's, if you eat meat or if you're vegetarian, um, go to the, the meat section, I guess you would say, and get grass fed, sustainably raised, um, beef, if that's what you're going to eat. Uh, same thing with chicken. You really want to get free range chicken, organic if possible. Um, eggs are such a great source of protein and so versatile. So you can see that everything that I've just said is all real whole food hasn't been tampered with. It's all real. Um, it's in its most natural form. And then I would say, let's go get some staples. So things like quinoa is a great staple. It's a superfood. It's gluten-free. It has so many benefits. It has pro protein in it. I mean, I'm obsessed with quinoa. You can eat it every single day if you wanted. Um, and things like gluten-free oats, like those are really versatile too if you're more of like a substantial breakfast person in the morning. Um, and then maybe like a gluten-free pasta, you know, like I love a pasta and just because I'm a nutritionist doesn't mean I don't indulge in pasta, but you can still eat things that are kind of alternatives to the traditional thing. So if you're at the grocery store, you might be new to things like lentil or chickpea pasta or brown rice pasta, things that are made from whole grains that don't contain gluten or the best. Um, and then you can grab some things like pasta sauce, but I really want to touch on the importance of reading your labels. There's a lot of really crappy food brands out there that will label and health wash you to make you believe that you're buying something healthy because it says vegan or gluten-free or keto. Just don't be fooled by stuff like that and make sure that you're turning the product around and reading the label. And you really want to be looking out for things like you know, MSG, sodium nitrates, uh, food coloring, additives, chemicals, things like that. And if you see those things on the back of a label, I would advise you to not buy it. So when you're going grocery shopping, the two biggest components I would say are buying real whole food ingredients plus reading your labels because it's so easy to go to the grocery store and get sucked into all of the new trendy foods out there. And some of them are great. So, like, trust me, there's so many amazing brands that I love, but some of them are tricking you into making you feel like you're eating healthy when you're actually not. So, yeah. So just being mindful of the labels, being mindful of are you being, buying a real whole food or a processed food. Like I said before, we really want to be limiting the processed foods because they pr provide no nutritional value, essentially, and it's just a waste. So like, why would we be fueling our bodies and supporting our bodies with crappy products? Like, think of your body as a Ferrari, and you want to be eating the most premium ingredients. Like, you would want to be fueling a Ferrari with the most premium gasoline. Think of your body in that sense. So next time you're at the grocery store and you're really tempted to buy that bag of Oreos, ask yourself if you want to be made of Oreos. And actually, it's so crazy. This seems, it's like common sense, but actually when I learned this in nutrition school, it's mind-blowing. Mind so we're actually made of the food that we eat, which 
now if that makes total sense but actually like the cells in our bodies they consume the food that we eat and they create energy within the cell so you're really actually becoming the food that you eat so anytime you feel like eating a bag of cheetos ask yourself do i want to be made of these bags of cheetos right or do i want to be made of this like beautiful abundant green healthy protein rich salad i know it's kind of crazy but it's something that we really need to be thinking about and Obviously, you know, we're not supposed to be perfect here. Like, you know, if you're eating pretty clean 80% of your life, I'd say that's pretty darn good. Um, so, yeah, be wary in the grocery store of artificial processed foods. Stick to the whole food approach um, and have fun with some alternatives like almond flour, chickpea pasta. And also, you really want to get some staples in there like Dijon mustard, olive oil, balsamic vinegar apple cider vinegar, um, tamari is a gluten-free soy sauce, love using that for a quick stir fry, and yeah, like keeping your pantry stocked with staples like that, whole foods, and a couple other things, and you are absolutely set any day of the week to whip up something super easy and healthy and delicious. Okay, first of all, I must say that you are very clearly passionate about what you do. I feel like... You could have probably gone on for another uh, easily 30 minutes just talking about that. Like, I feel like you have the entire store, like, memorized in your head. Um, that's amazing. So I think that that's, like, very clear. And for anybody in there, in, in here, in here, anybody who's in this clubhouse chat that, you know, is not unsure when you walk into the store and you have, like, an empty bag or empty grocery cart, just start there start there and then I, I, I have a I have a pretty good feeling that your cart will be filled and it'll look like a beautiful rainbow at the end of it all and you're not even gonna have space in your cart for the Oreos although I've, I feel like I've heard of worse things than being an Oreo um <laughs> just saying just kidding <laughs> um no but so thank you for taking us to that virtual tour. That was actually really, really helpful. Um, not to say that we, we're going to keep going through this. I, we have so much more to ask. But I do have two questions, So, and they, they aren't really related, but, um, but I'm going to say them quickly. So one, you stress a lot um, about gluten-free, gluten-free, gluten-free. Um, what I is it, is it be just because gluten doesn't have so much nutrient density that it's like worth eating is it like because i know that celiac or specific, but like what is kind of that why why is it so like why should we avoid it um that's one question and the second question just so that i can say it now um is what about for people who like aren't at home all day long um and don't have time to make these beautiful group like well i mean you know don't whatever maybe they're not into meal prepping you know start starting somewhere or whatever i know meal prepping is the ideal scenario but not all of us are perfect about meal prepping um you know or you're at work all day and you don't have time for something so then just like having a to-go snack um stuff like that like could you kind of give us or or alternatives uh for eating out if you're going to order something in like what's like appropriate i know those are a lot of questions in one but take it away <laughs> So for gluten, I'm really glad you asked this question. And I know there's a lot of controversy around gluten. Some people think that it's okay. Some people think it's not okay. I'm one of the people who I, it's actually science-backed, uh, and gluten is really disruptive to our gut. And that's really what it comes down to, is that gluten has this chemical in it called zonulin that gets into your gut and creates these leaky gut um, Basically, it's leaky gut syndrome where you have these like tight cell junctions in your gut and it so it creates some space between those tight junctions and that creates all these like things in your gut like chemicals and acid, all these food particles seep out of your gut into your bloodstream and that is not what we want and that's what happens when we eat gluten. So that's why a lot of people are anti-gluten. Because it's very disruptive to our gut, and I know that sounds really crazy, and I know you're probably like, screw you, I like gluten, I want to eat my bread, because a lot of people are in that mindset, right? And, you know, that being said, I don't, 
I don't never eat gluten. You know, it's about the 80-20 rule. Like, I still will eat bread. I'll still eat pizza. But it's just being more mindful that that's what's happening when you eat gluten is that it's potentially really harming your gut, especially if you're someone who suffers from, you know, IBS or gut disorders. You really, really want to be avoiding gluten. And I also will say that getting a food sensitivity test is so beneficial. If you are wondering if you're sensitive to gluten, chances are you are but you if you want to just like confirm or you think like oh i'm not sensitive to it i highly recommend getting a food sensitivity test you can get a chinese medicine food sensitivity test version for 50 bucks because i know some of them are really expensive to get like the you know like the pricks in your back or whatever um so yeah something food for thought if anyone's curious about getting tested for gluten i highly highly recommend it so that's the piece on gluten Another question you asked about meal prep and if we don't have the time. Yeah, so I would say anytime you are in the kitchen, making sure you're just making enough for at least two or three left, you know, meals for leftover. It's just really being efficient. And that could even mean like on a Friday, being aware of what's in your pantry and your fridge for the following week. So scheduling in on a Friday, 20 or 30 minutes just to think about what I'm going to eat next week. And just like by doing that tiny little practice every Friday, you are so ahead of your health game because you it's in your head of, oh, I need to pick a couple recipes. Let me just quickly go to my email recipe folder that I have from all those awesome food bloggers and pick two. And then maybe you do carve out an hour on Sunday to just like make one thing that'll last you a couple days. Um, but really it comes down to just planning And also, you know, let's say you're at the grocery store and you need some quick snacks. There's a lot of really easy grab-and-go things you can grab these days. Like, uh, for example, there's these chomp beef jerky sticks. They're super clean. They're Whole30 approved. Um, Something like that would be super helpful to have on hand. Things like blueberries, almonds, things that are just easy to snack on. Um, And there's also, there's like I said, there's so many great food brands coming out these days that I believe are super clean because I read the label and I understand. So I I encourage you to do the same. Um, and just being efficient with your time, you know, like chances are you're cooking at least a couple times a week. So just making sure you're making double your double it, right? So you have leftovers and you don't have to think about lunch for the next couple of days or find a meal prep delivery service if you have the means for that you know there's really an answer for for kind of all of the the I don't have time or I'm busy like there is definitely a solution for for all of those um those challenges and I forget what was the last thing that you asked about (laughs) that was pretty much it it was just like well it was also you know if we if you're ordering out um like ordering in you know, that kind of thing. Like, if you're not making the food yourself, what would you suggest as, like, a healthy alternative? Especially if it's, like, you know, a late night. If you're working late and you're, like, oh, like, I have to just run and grab something real quick from wherever. What would you suggest is, like, a healthy-ish alternative? Yeah, totally. I mean, if you live by Trader Joe's, I mean, Trader Joe's has pretty decent, like, salads and wraps and stuff like that. Um, or you could do like, you know, a stir fry. I mean, I don't know. It depends on where you live too. Sometimes you're lucky enough to live by all these holistic health cafes that have these grab and go options ready to go. I'm in Vancouver and there's so many things like that. I'm very fortunate to, to have that, um, access, but if you're just, you know, living somewhere where you might not have that access to Trader Joe's or a, um, you know, a a cleaner cafe alternative, I would say, you know, just maybe you order a stir fry from a Chinese restaurant, something like vegetables, protein, maybe a brown rice, uh, maybe some sushi with brown rice or just normal sushi. Um, You know, and another important piece is to not stress about it. If you're, if this is like a regular habit, then I would say maybe try to uh, overcome that challenge by planning out a little bit, preparing a little bit. So you aren't stuck in that situation, but if you really are, maybe just, you know, get something that you feel like eating at that time and and enjoy it and don't stress, you know? 
Um, I know you also mentioned a lot of uh, recipes and food blogs and all that kind of stuff, and I just want to plug your own website because we were just talking about this, Danielle and I, how we are obsessed with the your newsletter and all the snack ideas and all the recipes and all that good stuff. It's super, super simple. You guys, like, honestly, register or subscribe to her newsletter because it's it's a bunch of golden nuggets of information that are just so easy. You can take it with you next time you go to the grocery store. I swear, I... I I love it. But anyway, so that's just a little plug. (laughs) But um, you also mentioned the Whole30, which um, if you guys don't know, it's it's, uh, basically, I believe, well, maybe you can explain it better than I can. I've never personally done it. But speaking of uh, Whole30, you know, in that genre of things, there are a lot of diets out there, keto, Whole30, all these different ones. Um, whether people do it for a long period of time, short period of time, what is your perspective on it? I know there's just, you know, there's a lot of different things that are said about all these different diets, whether it's sustainable, whether it's not. So I would love to hear your perspective on that kind of thing. And if there's any in particular that um, stick out to you. I love this question. So Whole30 is a it's basically it's basically the elimination diet. It's what nutritionists call the elimination diet, and the whole goal is to identify what foods you're sensitive to. So you cut out anything that's inflammatory. So things like dairy, gluten, uh, legumes, and uh, sugar, stuff like that. So you're really just eating whole, real foods, which I think is the best approach. Whole thirty, in my opinion, is very restricting if you're doing it from a standpoint of wanting to understand your body more and see what you're sensitive to, I think that's a great place to start. But if you're doing it to maybe lose weight, I think it's a bit too restricting in my opinion. And you're going to be on this like crazy regimented diet for 30 days. And then as soon as you get off of it, you're like, oh my God, give me the cake, give me the brownies, give me this, give me that. And you're just going to go right back to where you started. So my take on kind of the trendy diets is I don't really recommend them to my clients. What I do think is the best approach is finding what works for you and experimenting what types of foods work for you. And maybe you do get a food sensitivity test to actually see like what you're sensitive to, what causes any, you know, uh, digestive issues or inflammation and working with a nutritionist to find out the best eating styles that are going to suit your body's uh, needs. Um, Things like keto, I think that could also be harmful. I know that, again, it's restricting. Also, there's a way to do keto and it's like, you know, eat a bunch of cheese, eat a bunch of bacon. And I'm like, I'm like, how is that? How is that good for you? Like, I understand the science behind it, but I would come at that and just say why don't you just learn to eat a real whole food approach in a way that doesn't feel like you're restricting yourself for having to eat a certain way but in a way that feels abundant and sustainable um so if i did have to choose a diet that i think is the best i would say paleo the paleo approach is pretty good because you eat a ton of vegetables you eat quality protein and um but you can modify it, right? Like you can follow a paleo guideline and add in some whole grains, add in some, you know, dairy if you're not sensitive to it. Um, and and yeah, it's really about just seeing what works for you and experimenting and just having that awareness with your body. I know that we can grow up our whole lives and not have a relationship with the food that we eat or how we feel when we eat food. It takes maybe a really crazy experience like uh, you know an illness or a disease to really understand how a food is affecting you um so so yeah I mean I I hope that answered your question but I think like I said it really comes down to experimenting and just making sure that you're filling your body with real whole foods I love it I I agree with you 100% I think that there's so many of these like you know, fad diets and whatever else that comes out. And every day if something's new and then like that thing that was amazing is all of a sudden like really bad for you. And it's just like, it's so hard to keep up. So it's just like, just keep it simple. Like eat what makes you feel good. Eat what gives, what gives you energy. Um, and it should, it, I think the, I think the whole stigma of like 
healthy foods and nutrition and like having a healthy diet that is what causes stress it's like not know like you know always feeling like you have to be a certain way or keep up with you know the new trend it's just like no just do what makes you feel good (laughs) um speaking of feeling good um let's kind of shift this we have like so much more to ask and so little time oh my god there's so much more we can talk about i feel like we need to do like episode two nutrition (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay i love it um so to you like what are some of like the biggest obstacles people face when trying to change or improve their nutrition, like mentally, physically, spiritually, and like, how do, what's like your approach to helping people overcome them? I would really say it comes down to their belief systems, you know, like how they grew up that has so much to do with challenges that we're facing now as adults. And that's not just with nutrition, it's with or, you know, confidence, it's with everything. Um, So really working with a client and seeing, you know, why are you facing this challenge and kind of dissecting it with them, you know, it it really goes beyond the food. I mean, let's say you want to lose weight. You don't want to lose weight because you want to see the scale drop. You want to lose weight because you want to feel confident, have better relationships, um, and just feel better, right? So you're kind of in this this more like emotional challenge versus like a physical challenge right so I would say you know leading with compassion that's so important when you're when you're going on when you're embarking on this health journey especially if you're new to your health journey I always call it a health journey because it takes you know years and years and years your whole life essentially to that you're on this thing and you might not be starting it yet or maybe you just started it and you're nervous, but I would say compassion is everything. Um, love yourself and honor your body wherever you're at and not feel like you should be here or you should be there or, you know, you've been working so hard for a year and you've seen no results. Honor that you've done the work for a year and that it's more about how you feel and your internal confidence and love for yourself versus, you know, the number on the scale or maybe those external goals that you have. Um, but to overcome challenges, I think it really comes down to just making a plan. Seriously, planning is everything, making things simple and attainable and working it into your schedule. So it happens. If you schedule something, I think Marie Forleo says this, I, if you schedule something in your calendar, it is like 60% more likely to actually happen. So what, whatever health goals you have, let's say it's to eat a healthy smoothie every morning, like schedule that in your calendar. Or maybe it's to move your body every single morning, schedule it in your calendar, and you will for sure see the results. And you won't even see the results. You'll also feel them, and you'll feel your absolute best. Um, so... Yeah, compassion is everything and just being consistent. Those two things are so, so crucial for uh, seeing the results that you want to see on your health journey. Whew, when you said food, or when you said it can be emotional, I, that immediately, I was like, yes, like food is so, it can be such an emotional part of our lives, you know, whether it's um, comfort food or nostalgia. A lot of the, I feel like a lot of times I, I talk to people about, you know, any change in, in eating habit. It's, well, I grew up with this, or sometimes they don't want to give it up because it takes them back to, to a time, you know? So that is such a powerful oof, thought. I was just like that. And that, that's something that's really hard to, to get past sometimes, you know? So, what a, what a crazy thing. Um, we are coming close on time, but I do just kind of want to ask a follow-up question to that. When, um, when you do see or when, you, when, when people do in, implement those kinds of changes, um, I guess what are the biggest differences you see? I know, you know, it could be mental, spiritual, physical, productive, productivity, like whatever it is. What are, what are maybe some of the standouts that you've seen in your experience? Yeah, I think honestly, it comes down to the spiritual and the emotional side of 
being on your health journey. I mean, so many times I see, you know, clients that are dealing with a lot of external stressors and that's really coming through with their, with their eating patterns or their, uh, you know, their lack of motivation for wanting change. Um, and with that, I would say, get more spiritual, you know, like have a self care routine every single morning, try to take care of yourself the best that you can with the resources that you have. It doesn't need to be this wild, expensive self care ritual. I mean, you can simply just purchase a a dollar journal from the dollar store and start just journaling out your your feelings and your emotions every single morning. And that right there can really get you a leg up on your, your health game. And also like visualizing your success. I think that is so important. Picturing where you want to be a year from now, whether that's how you feel, how you look, where you are, it can be so impactful. Um, so yeah, I would say like spiritual and emotional kind of things stand out the most with nutrition because it all ties in together. I love that so much. I think it, I mean, it really is all connected. Like the reason why we have this, you know, this clubhouse chat, like revolving around holistic fitness is because it like, that's why it's called beyond the workout just because even when it comes to exercise, it just goes beyond so much more than that. Like the food, it goes beyond so much more than that. You know, um, it really is about, like you just said, it's just having a connection and understanding with yourself and your body and, knowing and honoring it and understanding that like today's gonna might look a little different than tomorrow and that's okay and just doing the things that make you feel really good whether it's you know it is having that ice cream you know if that's what you want or whether it is you know being if that's if your goal is if your if your one goal is to eat healthier every day then maybe it is a matter of checking your priorities and saying okay I want to prioritize planning my days better because it starts there right and planning sometimes doesn't even have to do with the food that you're actually eating but it starts there and then you can kind of it all it all will fall into place and with that said oh my goodness so much so many nuggets of knowledge that we've just in, in, <laughs> uncovered in the past 50 minutes it's so crazy anybody in this room uh have any questions at all for emily please please raise your hand um i know i I usually say that in the beginning um didn't say it obviously everyone's welcome to ask questions so now is your chance um to raise your hand and ask away um i'll give you guys a couple seconds to raise your hands um if anybody's listening i know she kind of already told us everything <laughs> she threw the whole kitchen kitchen <laughs> fridge on us i would usually say kitchen sink but it's the fridge uh, get it but um <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah. <laughs> um all right well anybody going once going twice <laughs> emily um if there is anything you'd like this room to take away if there's one thing that you'd like some, everybody here to take away what would that thing be that your health journey is the best thing that you will ever experience in your life so if you're feeling overwhelmed or you don't really know where to start or if you're feeling like you want to be on a health journey then go for it Today is the day that you start because I promise it just gets easier and easier and more. You'll be amazed at what your body can do. So if you have any questions or anything, I would love to hear from you. You can find me on my Instagram at wellness. That's woo as in woohoo. I don't know if Danielle and Louise will have um, like my information up there, but uh, we'll, post yeah. it. we'll post it on our Instagram following this oh, good. chat. Yes, so check okay. out our Instagram guys. Yeah, it's been so fun, you guys. I love talking about nutrition, obviously. I'm very passionate about it. So thank you so, so much. Last thing, so sorry, but for those who jumped in a little late, can you um, really quick and like in your elevator pitch, tell us um, what is your new uh, course that you're going to be launching soon? Yeah, so I'm launching an online course called Clean Up Your Diet. 
It is a compilation of topics that I go through with my clients. So bringing awareness to your diet, understanding how to read labels, understanding how to grocery shop, how to make quick and efficient meals, developing a confidence with your kitchen. I know that sounds silly, but it's super important. And helping you change your mindset around uh, nutrition and cooking and food and everything. And also diving deeper into the emotional aspect of nutrition and how you view food and uh, just really building a strong relationship with food with yourself. So we dive into a lot of things. It's launching in a couple weeks. So I'm super excited to, uh, to, to give it out in the world. I love it. Hey guys, we will 100% put it out. Crystal has a question real quick, so Crystal, jump on real quick. Um, but yeah, just so that you know, we'll give you guys all this information, all the Emily's information on our Instagram following this chat. Take it away, Crystal. Hi, Emily. Um, sorry, I got on the chat a little late, so if you already stated this, my bad. But um, I know you mentioned right now about reading labels and something I've always been under the impression and I don't know if you know more about this but I've always um understood that if you look at how many carbs is in something and then you divide the fiber into the carbs if that number is under six then it's like okay to eat but ideally you want that number to be under three um for it to like be something worth you know, consuming. Do you know anything about that by any chance? Hi, Crystal. Thank you for your question. Um, so, so it depends. So if you're looking to, it depends on where you're at on your health journey. If you have high blood pressure or, you know, diabetes, or you're trying to lose weight or something that you need to be watching your carb intake, then that is something that you can certainly um, go off of, but I'm not really, to be honest with you, I'm not really a big, I don't read like the carbs in a food because I don't think that's important (laughs) to be quite honest with you. I think what's important is that you're eating real whole foods and you know, the, the real whole foods that you're eating, like quality whole food ingredients, there isn't going to be that you know, carb, net, fiber, you won't have to worry about stuff like that. So if you're really focusing on real whole food ingredients and eating, you know, quote unquote carbs, you're getting carbs from things like sweet potato, quinoa, cauliflower, a banana. And I would really highly recommend getting your carbs from things like that, from things like real whole foods. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. I appreciate you explaining that. Of course. I mean, yeah, that was, I, I loved that explanation so much. Yeah. Like, rule of thumb is, like, if you're eating whole foods from the earth that are have not been in a factory, like, that shouldn't be, like, topic of concern because those are all literally grown from <laughs> our, mm-hmm. our earth. It is there, for, like, from Mother Nature, so it's, like, health, you know. Um, I love it. You guys, this has been such a... Oh, what? Sorry, Crystal, go ahead. No, it's fine. I was just going to say right now that you said about the factory, you reminded me of what my dad always says. He always says, if it's touched by man, then it's poison. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Like it. Like it. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. You guys, this was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Emily, for giving us your time and all of this knowledge. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to, or we look forward to, so many more conversations in the future. Um, And, yeah, you guys, uh, we will give you guys Emily's information. If you guys have any questions, go check out her podcast, Newly Nutrition. Um, And we will see you guys next week for our next Clubhouse chat. Thank you guys all so much for coming. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, seriously.